In this episode, the leg exercise that you never do. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Welcome, everyone, to episode 201 of The Daily Mother Swole, the first episode in the double Benjamin digits. So welcome. Thank you for joining me yesterday for episode 200. Welcome, Facebook Live and Periscope. Also, thank you for joining me if you're watching on YouTube and also listening in on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Stitcher. So we have people from all over. This is very national. This is a very national show today. We have Missouri. We have Tennessee. We got Florida. We have, uh, what was it, uh, North Carolina, Texas. I like that. I like when people start repping names or, or repping their states. I like that. We are a nation of one. Thanksgiving. Yeehaw. All right. Fuck yeah. Let's do it. This is an episode about, it's hump day. It's Wednesday. I think, right? It's Wednesday. You never do this leg exercise. And I was thinking about what I wanted to discuss today. I want to do something with an exercise. I want to do something with a workout, uh, with some kind of exercise move. And it got me thinking about the important ones and which ones are the most important and which ones people generally never do because I'm always explaining certain ones. And I signed on and someone asked me, what's your PR for bench? And I told them I don't give a shit. And I really don't. I don't care about max repetitions. I never did. I have done like a one rep max for deadlifts and things like that. But once 10, 15 years ago, I did a max rep for bench press. It's just not important. It's not important. It's not a valuable measurement of muscle size in terms of hypertrophy. You don't need to do max reps to build muscle. It just increases your risk. It is a very arbitrary number. It's a very egocentric, trying to get that number higher, higher. It's a very CrossFit PR bullshit type of, of target. And there are dangers when trying to attain a, you know, a personal record or a max rep regularly, or especially, you know, with CrossFit style training every single day, it gets very dangerous. That's why people get hurt so often. And people don't turn, uh, people don't tear their shoulder. They don't tear their pec. They tear their rotator cuff and they get all these injuries that end up nagging and limiting and inhibiting results more than actually benefiting from trying to achieve that goal. You can do it. I, I've done this in an episode before about different ways to measure max is doing four rep max, five rep max, six rep max. But today is neither there nor that, or whatever you want to say. It's not that. We're talking about legs. And the most important leg exercise that you never do, that you never do, has to do with legs today. Let's talk about the regular squat first. The regular squat is not the exercise I'm referring to, but let's talk about the regular squat. It's a great exercise. It's functional. It's what gets you off the ground the first time when you're one, two, or three years old. When you start standing up, you start walking. It's great for mass. It's great for strength. And it's functional because you bend down, you get out of a chair, you get up off the ground. It's functional. It's good for building mass and strength because you can overload a lot of weight because you have a lot of stability. You have a lot of muscles working integrated together. It's a very good exercise to build mass. There's a lot more to building mass than just lifting a lot of weight. There's making sure that the right muscles are firing when you're lifting a lot of weight. And I talk about injury, and I was just talking about one rep max for a reason. It's very simple. It's very basic. But if you get hurt, you don't train. If you get injured, you don't work out. If you don't work out, you don't break down the muscle. You don't recover. You're out of your cycle. If you get hurt, you're out of it. You're out of it. And there's a real psychological breakdown people go under when they're injured, where they have tendonitis or they have major injuries that set them back. It's very hard mentally as well as it is physically. So there is a, there's this separation where you have to understand that your training and your health are the same thing. It's not all about just doing more and more and more. You have to stay healthy while you do it because if you get hurt, you're taking steps back. Injuries set people back more than max reps. So mass is great, strength is great, and that kind of overload is great with a two-leg squat. Very functional, excellent exercise. But like I said, there's more to it than just how much weight you can load up. It's what muscles are working while you're doing the exercise. 
you want the glutes to work properly. You want the hamstrings to synergize with the glutes. You want the quads to work with, you know, for knee extension and to help with stabilizing the hip joint. You want all the muscles of the adductors and the, and the gluteus medius to work together to stabilize the hip in a frontal plane side to side. You want muscles in the obliques and, you know, deep inside the hip to stabilize rotationally. So you want all these muscles to do their job. If you have a business, you don't want the person that is, does janitorial services that mops the floor to deal with, you know, your client's biggest portfolios. Not that he or she couldn't, but that's not their job. That's not their expertise. They're better at cleaning and maintaining the physical space of your business. And you have people that are qualified to do the other job. You have people that do their job and they do it well. And that's called a well-oiled machine. That's when everything works properly. That's having the right puzzle pieces in the right place. Simple. Makes sense. Same thing with the body. You want to work the muscles. You want to build mass. You want to build strength. But you need to make sure the right muscles are firing so you don't get injured, so you don't get hurt. And also forget the injury so that the muscles that you're trying to work are working optimally. If not, then you're going to have that increased risk for injury and also lack of development. <clears throat> the exercise I want to talk about is a single leg squat. And the great thing about the single leg squat <clears throat> is you could do it anywhere. Anyone is capable of doing it. It's very functional. And I have this exercise already broken down in a video on my YouTube channel. So if you watch this video on YouTube or you want to check out that link, you can check out my exercise video playlist on my YouTube channel at Swolnormous. But I will also put the link in the description of this video on YouTube in case you don't want to take 20 seconds and look through the list. You can just click on this video and click on the link below. I'll put it in the description box. The single leg squat is a fantastic exercise because it you're spending more time on one leg when you're walking. So you're actually increasing your proprioception by doing a single leg squat. So you're getting the brain communicating better with the muscles. So you have better neuromuscular coordination, better neuromuscular communication. You're going to fire the muscles that you want to fire when you want to fire them. And during a squat, you shouldn't be getting crushed in your quads. You might get really sore in your quads. You might get sore in your hamstrings, but you really should be getting all the stress or fo focusing all the stress on the glutes. Uh, the glutes are the prime mover for any lower body exercise. They're the base of the core. Super important. I always talk about activating the glutes. And on this hump day, it's even more important to talk about the exercise that's going to fire the glutes the most. Proprioception is your body's conscious, uh, subconscious awareness of its surroundings. So if you close your eyes, the reason why if you're balancing on one leg, you start to fall over is because your body has no ability to know where it is relative to other things around the room. If you stand on one leg, your eyes are open. Your body is constantly scanning and assessing, okay, I'm you know, two feet away from that pole and three feet away from that wall. That piece of carpet's right there. That chair is right there. And your body kind of activates muscle to keep that even distance from each of those things that it's assessing around the room. When you close your eyes, you have no frame of reference because it's all black. And unless you practice it regularly, you're going to fall over within a few seconds because you don't have that frame of reference of your surroundings. Proprioception is important, especially as you get older. And I know a lot of you that are watching this are younger, but as you get older, you increase your risk of falling and that's going to affect your bone, you know, as your bone density wears down as you get older, those falls lead to broken hips, broken legs, broken arms, and those things don't heal. You become less mobile and that's more of a reason of decline of health and eventually death than a lot of other things, than a lot of other ailments. So the physical capacity to be mobile to not be depressed and be in a wheelchair or in a you know or bedridden, that bone density is important, but also the proprioception and how those muscles are actually coordinating to keep that balance. When you do a single leg squat, you're working your body in more planes of motion. You're activating those internal muscles, just like the rotator cuff of the shoulder. You have a rotator cuff, quote unquote, of the hip. You have some deep rotators that need to be activated. Your gluteus medius is on the side of your hip that stabilizes you sideways. When you're doing a squat, you don't have to balance as much. And there's three planes of motion, moving to the front, moving side to side, and then rotating. So those three planes of motion, if you are doing a single leg squat, your body is open. It's an open chain all of a sudden. Your body can move in all those different directions. You're more mobile than you were with two legs on the ground. So your body has to work hard to keep you in alignment and thus activating more muscles that are deeper during the single leg squat. When your brain has more communication with the glutes, your glutes will translate more force in exercises such as the two-leg squat as lunges, leg press, whatever else you like to do. I'm not saying don't do those exercises, hell no. I'm just saying you need to make sure the right muscles are working when you do them. 
You also need less weight during a single leg squat. Obviously, you have half your body working and plus the instability factor. So if you need to do this at home, you could do this anywhere. You don't need a lot of weight. It's great for a warm-up. You should be doing this all the time. Because it's an activation exercise, because it's a core activator, you could do this before chest day, before back day, before leg day. You could do this on off day. Single leg squat could be done nice and slow and controlled for about 10 to 20 repetitions, a couple sets every day if you wanted to. You can do that. And what I want you to do, if you're watching this, make sure that you check out my exercise video list on my YouTube channel. Look up single leg squat. It's right there, one of the earlier videos. Actually, it's probably fairly recent, but look up single leg squat, check it out, and follow that. Do that, especially on leg day, but do it every day or every couple days if you can. You'll see a big difference. Single leg squat, the exercise that you never do for legs, I freaking guarantee it. And if you're driving in a truck all the time and you're giving me truck, bumpy truck hearts, this is something that you should do at pit stops. Uh, if you're in line at the bank, if you're running around the house with kids all day and you don't have time to go to the gym, these are things that you can do that will help prevent back pain. They'll help increase your stability, your ability to walk for the rest of your life, your ability to balance for the rest of your life. You'll decrease your risk of those fractures or those falls. You will decrease your risk of ankle pain, of knee pain, back pain, and potentially you know lower back and shoulder pain even if your hips are creating instabilities in your shoulder as well because everything's connected. So make sure you do your single leg squat. I will be here tomorrow, of course, at 12 noon Eastern time for thanks gaining. Uh, you see what I did there? See what I did there? Episode 202 of The Daily Swole. Enjoy time with your family. Make sure you still get your shit done. Most gyms are open, so don't make any excuses. Get it done. Earn that food. And I'll see everyone tomorrow for episode 202 of The Daily Mother Swole. Peace out and enjoy the rest of Juice Hump Days. (laughs) 